Happy Monday, Discovery Learners! It is I, Teacher Liz, here with another episode of Ability to Learn on the Discovery Day program. Today, I'll be sharing with you some cool observances, interesting history, cool facts, cool animals, and plants. And let's not forget, there's a new Spanish word to learn and a new place to explore this week. And also, don't forget to log in every day to the live Zoom sessions provided every day by the Discovery Educational Team. Now let's not delay any further, let's start the show. And now for today's observances. Happy Monday, Discovery Learners! It is I, Teacher Liz, here, bringing you your daily observances for August 9, 2021, starting with National Rice Pudding Day. Mmm, rice pudding! On August 9th, many enjoy their favorite dish on National Rice Pudding Day. A variety of recipes exist for rice pudding. All of them include cooked rice as the base ingredient and combine milk such as cows, coconut, evaporated, or cream. With bread, sugar, molasses, or honey gives the pudding a sweet taste, along with other flavors such as vanilla, nutmeg, and cinnamon. Eggs hold the dish together, and butter gives it a rich, creamy consistency. While many enjoy rice pudding as a dessert, it is also ideal for breakfast or as a side dish. Add fruit, nuts, raisins, or enjoy it with some whipped cream. Since there are so many recipes for rice pudding, the opportunity to sample more than one presents itself. After being baked, serve the pudding hot or cold. Add fresh fruit or nuts, or even whipped cream topping. However, raisins are traditional. Other spices such as nutmeg, allspice, and even cayenne add a variety to rice pudding recipes. Citrus zest brings brightness to this dessert that can oftentimes be rich and heavy to the palate. Although most recipes call for sugar, alternatives include monk fruit, agave syrup, and palm sugar. So how do we observe National Rice Pudding Day? Well, the first thing to do is try eating some rice pudding today. You can go ahead and pick some up at the store. Or you can pause here and write this recipe so you can try cooking rice pudding at home. So do you like rice pudding? And if you do, what kind of toppings do you add to it? Go ahead and let us know in the comment section below. Our next observance for today is National Book Lovers Day. National Book Lovers Day on August 9th harnesses all the excitement bibliophiles feel about books in one celebration. A day for those who love to read, National Book Lovers Day encourages you to find your favorite reading place. A good book, whether it be fiction or nonfiction, and just read the day away. Let's go ahead and step back in time and learn a little bit of history about books. The very first books used parchment or vellum, which is calfskin, for the book pages. Book covers were made of wood and often carved with leather. Clasps or straps kept the books closed. Public libraries appeared in the Middle Ages and public libraries often chain the books to the shelf or desk to prevent theft. Moving forward, along with several recent developments, book manufacturers use digital printing. Book pages are often printed using toner rather than ink. It's a result of digital printing. Print on demand opens up a whole new realm of publishing. In this case, distributors don't print the books until the consumer places the order. These days, more and more people prefer to read ebooks. Ebook or electronic book refers to the book length and publication in a digital form. They're usually available through the internet. However, they can also be found on CD-ROM and other systems. You can read an ebook on a computer or via a portable book display device known as an ebook reader, such as a reader, Nook, or Kindle. So, how do we observe National Book Lovers Day? Well, sit back, relax, and read. That's simple. And don't forget to share the joy of reading with the young people in your life. Inspire them with your favorite novel or find out about the last book they took off the shelf. And don't forget to share what you've been reading with us too. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. And let us know what you plan to read for National Book Lovers Day. 
And for our last observance for today is National Dollar Day. But this observance is actually done on August 8th on Sunday, which was yesterday. But I feel its historical importance is worth a mention. National Dollar Day, celebrated on August 8th, commemorates the day Congress establishes the U.S. monetary system in 1786. In 1862, the United States printed its first dollar bill. Do you know whose face was printed there? Well, it wasn't George Washington. The first dollar bill featured Salmon P. Chase, President Lincoln's Secretary of Treasury. Interestingly, the dollar bill in our pockets today hasn't changed for more than 50 years. While the $5, $10, $20, and even the $50 earned redesigns in recent times, the single remains unchanged. Due to counterfeiting, redesigns keep the larger currencies ahead of the counterfeiters. However, the single note doesn't face that type of attention than other notes of a higher denomination. So how do we observe National Dollar Day? Well, you can either spend or save a dollar depending on your preference. Investigate your dollar bill. Go ahead and check out the intricate designs and symbolism printed on the dollar bill. Or maybe hit up your local Dollar Tree. <laughs> it's up to you. But whatever you plan to do, go ahead and let us know in the comment section below. Go ahead and comment down below and let us know how you plan on observing, well, these observances for today. On this day in history, today, in 1957, American Bandstand premieres on network TV on ABC. American Bandstand is an American music performance and dance TV program that aired in various versions from 1952 to 1989 and was hosted from 1956 until its final season by Dick Clark who served as a program's producer. It featured teenagers dancing to top 40 music hits introduced by Clark. At least one popular music act over the decades running a gamut of Jerry Lee Lewis to Run DMC. Usually it appeared in person to lip sync one of their latest singles. The show's popularity helped Dick Clark become an American media mogul and inspired similar long running music programs such as Soul Train and the British series Top of the Pops. Clark eventually assumed ownership of the program through his Dick Clark Productions company. Today, in 1966, the Beatles released their single, Yellow Submarine, with Eleanor Rigby in the UK. Yellow Submarine is a song by the English rock band, The Beatles, from their 1966 album, Revolver. It is also issued on a double side single paired with Eleanor Rigby. Written as a child song by Paul McCartney and John Lennon, its drummer Ringo Starr's vocal spots on the album. The single went to number one on the charts in the United Kingdom and several other European countries, and Australia, Canada, and New Zealand. It won Ivor Newell Award for the highest certified sales in any single written by a British songwriter and issued in the UK in 1966. In the US, the song peaked at number two on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. The Beatles recorded Yellow Submarine during a period characterized by experimentation in the recording studio. After taping the basic track and vocals in the late May of 1966, they held a session to overdub nautical sound effects, party ambiance, and chorus singing as a novelty song coupled with Eleanor Rigby. A track devoid of any rock instrumentation, the single marked a radical departure for the group. It was also the first time they had issued a single in the UK consisting of album tracks. The song inspired the 1968 animated film Yellow Submarine and appeared as an operating track on the accompanying soundtrack album. Go ahead and leave a comment below and let us know what you think of today's historical events. Notable figures born on this day. Our first notable figure born today is Sam Elliott, born August 9, 1944 in Sacramento, California. 
This American actor, specializing in Western and action films, was nominated for a Critics' Choice Award for Best Acting Ensemble for his role in Up in the Air. He also appeared in Hulk and Ghost Rider, and in 2016, he began starring in The Ranch as Bo Bennett. Before he was famous, he played the lead role in a local production of Guys and Dolls. The journalist who wrote the review of the play said that Elliot should become a professional actor. After reading the review, he packed up his bags and moved to Hollywood. He worked in construction while attempting to start his acting career. He turns 77 years old today. Wow, happy birthday Sam Elliot. Our next notable figure born today is Michael Kors. Born August 9, 1959 in Long Island, New York. This American runway designer and television personality most recognized as one of the judges on Lifetime's Project Runway. Before he was famous, he dropped out of fit just after nine months to accept a position at a boutique across from New York's famous Berggroff Goodman. He's also well known for his signature MK bags. He turns 62 years old today. Happy birthday, Michael Kors. Another notable figure born today is the iconic Whitney Houston. Born August 9, 1963 in New York, New Jersey. This American R&B and pop performer who became the most awarded female singer in history for hits such as Hold Me from her record-breaking self-titled item to I Will Always Love You. Before she was famous, she grew up in a musical family with cousin Dionne Warwick and her godmother Aretha Franklin. She unfortunately passed away February 11th of 2012 at the age of 48. But an interesting piece of trivia to know about her is she created the entire soundtrack and starred in the film The Bodyguard along with Kevin Costner. And one of her other famous songs was a duet she sang with Mariah Carey, which was titled When You Believe back in 1998. Wow, I like her songs. Happy birthday, Whitney Houston! An additional notable figure born today is Dion Sanders. Born August 9, 1967 in Fort Myers, Florida. This American NFL cornerback and MLB outfielder who became the first athlete to play in both Super Bowl and the World Series. He was also an eight-time Pro Bowl section and two-time Super Bowl champion during his illustrious NFL career. Before he was famous, he earned a nickname Primetime in the All-Star Basketball game after doing a 360 dunk. He once set an NFL record with 19 return touchdowns, including kicks, punts, interceptions, and fumbles. His record was soon overtaken by Devin Hester in 2014. He turns 54 years old today. Happy birthday, Deion Sanders. And finally, our last notable figure born today is Jillian Anderson. Born August 9, 1968 in Chicago, Illinois. This American Golden Globe winning actress starred alongside David Duchovny portraying FBI agent Dana Scully on the television series The X-Files. She reprised her role in the 1998 film, The X-Files, its 2008 sequel, X-Files, I Want to Believe, and the 2016 X-Files miniseries. Before she was famous, she started her acting career by joining an amateur actor group while in high school. She turns 53 years old today. Happy birthday, Jillian Anderson. Happy birthday, everyone! Discovery Learners as we explore a new place of the week. This week we are traveling to Nicaragua. And do you hear that song in the background, Discovery Learners? Well, yes, that's the Nicaraguan National Anthem. As you give that a listen to, let's go ahead and learn a little more about the Nicaraguan flag. 
this nation's flag is horizontally striped blue, white, blue, with a central coat of arms. The coat of arms on the flag includes a triangle for equality, a liberty cap for freedom, and five volcanoes between two oceans, symbolic of the five original Central American countries between the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean basins. That's pretty interesting. And if you remember, most of the Central American countries' flags have light blue, white, and light blue on them, except for Belize. Pretty interesting flag and coat of arms there, Nicaragua. But let's go ahead and learn a little bit more about this nation. Nicaragua is a country located in Central America. It is actually the largest of the Central American republics, with Honduras and El Salvador to the north, Pacific Ocean to the west, the Caribbean Sea and Atlantic Ocean to the east, and Costa Rica to the south. The official name for Nicaragua is Republica de Nicaragua or the Republic of Nicaragua. Its form of government is a unitary multi-party republic with one legislative house, the National Assembly. Its head of state is a president and its capital is Managua. The official language for Nicaragua is Spanish and its most popular religion is Catholicism. The main monetary unit for Nicaragua is the Cordoba. 35 Nicaraguan Cordobas equals 1 US dollar. The current population of Nicaragua is 6,599,000 people. Nicaragua has a total area of 130,373 square miles. That's about the same size of the U.S. state of Arkansas. The main exports of Nicaragua is coffee, beef, gold, sugar, peanuts, and seafood. The main money-making industries of Nicaragua is agriculture. And that's because Nicaragua is primarily an agricultural country, exporting cash crops such as bananas, coffee, sugar, and tobacco. Wow, Nicaragua seems like a pretty interesting country. I don't know much about it, but I can't wait to teach you more. So be sure to stay tuned all week long as we give you more facts about Nicaragua here on Ability to Learn. Wow, now that's a really interesting place of the week. Here is the animal of the day. Today's animal is the piranha. Piranhas are small to medium-sized fish that live in the rivers of South America. Some piranhas can be found in warm lakes and rivers of North America and a Captai Lake in Bangladesh. The word piranha means fish tooth in the indigenous language of the Amazon. Exact number of species of piranha is unknown, but scientists can agree there are about 30 to 60 and they are not endangered. Here are some interesting piranha facts. Piranhas have a silver body covered in red patches that serve as camouflage in muddy waters in which they inhabit. Piranhas can be 5.5 to 17 inches in length and weigh about 7.7 .7 pounds. Yikes! Most people think that piranhas have insatiable appetite for blood, but they are actually omnivores, animals that eat animals and plants. They usually eat snails, fish, aquatic animals, and plants. They will feast on mammals or birds when they fall into the water, which doesn't really happen that often. Their sharp and pointed teeth are arranged in a single row. They can even bite through a hook made of silver. Their jawbone is very strong. It can crush a human hand in 5 to 10 seconds. Local people use piranha teeth to make weapons and other tools. Just like sharks, piranhas are equipped with special sensory organs which help them detect blood in the water. Piranhas are cannibals, means they eat their own species. They will attack and eat other piranhas when other meat sources are not available. Scary movies represent piranhas as ferocious man-eaters that can eat a human body in just a few seconds. Although they live and feed in large groups, piranhas need more time to finish a large prey. Groups of piranhas are known as schools, and schools can consist of a thousand fish. 
Dolphins, crocodiles, and turtles are the biggest enemies of piranhas. The mating season of the piranha can last during the rainy seasons of April and May, and the females can lay up to 5,000 eggs. Both males and the females take care of their eggs and 90% of the eggs will survive until hatching. Piranhas live up to 25 years in the wild and 10 to 20 years in captivity. So what do you think of today's animal? Is it cute? Is it creepy? Go ahead and let us know what you think in the comment section below. The plant of the day. Today's plant is the pomelo. Pomelo is the largest type of citrus fruit that belongs to the citrus family. It originates from Southeast Asia and Pacific Islands. Pomelo grows in tropical and subtropical areas. This fruit is commercially cultivated in Asia, San Diego, California, Florida, and Israel. Pomelo is part of the human diet for centuries. Besides being tasty, pomelo acts beneficially on the human health and can be used in treatment for various disorders. Wow, sounds interesting. So here's some more interesting facts about the pomelo. The pomelo tree can grow from 15 to 50 feet in height. Wow, that's tall. The pomelo tree develops large evergreen leaves. They are oblong in elliptic shape and have winged petrioles. Pomelo produces flowers up to four times per year. Flowers are individual, large, and usually purple colored. Sometimes the pomelo have white flowers. Flowers are very fragrant too. Pomelo is best known by its pear-shaped or round fruit. Unripe fruit is green colored. It changes color to yellow as it ripens. Fruit is large, usually 5.9 to 9.8 inches wide and weighs about 2 to 4 pounds. Wow, that's a big piece of fruit. Large specimens of pomelo can reach 12 inches in diameter and weigh up to 22 pounds. Whoa! That's like big as a pumpkin. Pomelo has a thick rind with dense, spongy pith beneath. Rind can be easily peeled. People usually discard the peel because of its bitter taste. Inner part of the fruit consists of 11 to 18 segments. Pulp is usually sweet and juicy. Some varieties of pomelo have sour and dry flesh. The color of the flesh depends on the type of pomelo. It can be white, yellow, pinkish, or red colored. Pomelo contains few irregularly shaped rigid seeds. Grapefruit is a hybrid produced by crossbreeding the pomelo and orange. Tangelo is a hybrid produced by crossbreeding the pomelo and a tangerine. Wow, that's interesting. Pomelo is an excellent source of vitamin C and A dietary fibers, and minerals such as potassium, iron, and calcium. One quarter of pomelo provides 130% of daily requirements of vitamin C. Wow! Pomelo is low caloric. Pomelo is a low caloric fruit. One quarter of pomelo contains of only 60 calories, and it is usually consumed raw. In its form of fruit salads, juices, and alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages, it is also used as an ingredient of various sweet and salty dishes, especially in Asian cuisine. Its peel can be candied, used for the production of marmalades, or consumed in combination with chocolate. It is also used as seasoning for dishes made of meat. Pomelo is used in treatment for gestational disorders, cough, sore throat, fever, fatigue, and even insomnia. Pomelo flowers are used in the industry of perfumes. The wood of the pomelo tree is used for manufacture of tool handles. Leaves of pomelo tree and rinds of the fruit are boiled and used in ritual cleansing of the body and protection against evil spirits in China. Hmm. Fruit-bearing pomelo trees usually live around 10 years out in the wild. It's that time again. We just learned about a new plant. So go ahead and tell us what you think in the comment section below. The word of the day. Today's word is volition. It is spelled V O L I T I O N. It's a noun. It means the faculty or power of using one's will. Volition. Our next word is a word you may have heard somewhere in today's episode. That word is insatiable. 
It is spelled I N S A T I A B L E. It's an adjective. It means of an appetite or desire impossible to satisfy. Insatiable. Hola, Discovery Learners. So, y'all, do my extra list. Hi, Discovery Learners. It is I, your teacher, Liz. Aquí es tu palabra en español de la semana. What that means is, here is your Spanish word of the week. Su palabra para esta semana es soul. Soul. Soul, which means sun. Soul. Sun. Soul. Sun. As in the sun in the sky. Soul. Sun. You can use this word in a phrase. Hoy hace mucho sol. Hoy hace mucho sol. Hoy hace mucho sol. Which means, it is very sunny today. Hoy hace mucho sol. Hoy hace mucho sol. Go ahead and practice speaking Spanish all week long by saying, Hoy hace mucho sol. Which means, it is very sunny today. Como se dice sun en español? Sol. Si. Sí. Muy bien. Hasta la semana que viene, Discovery Learners. Be sure to tune in next Monday to learn another Spanish Word of the Week here on Ability to Learn. Hey Discovery Learners, it's me Andrew Lancaster here with a fun list of prehistoric hits to watch this week. To start things off, let's take a look at The Land Before Time. This film has a rating of G. It has a 1 hour and 40 minute runtime and was made in 1989. It stars Judy Bars as Ducky and Gabe Damon as Littlefoot, and you can find it on Hulu. Up next is The Good Dinosaur. This film has a rating of PG and was made in the year 2015. It also has a 1 hour and 40 minute runtime and stars Raymond Ochoa, Sam Elliott, and Anna Paquin. Our next prehistoric blockbuster is Dinosaur. This film also has a rating of PG but was made in the year 2000. It has a 1 hour and 22 minute runtime and stars Hayden Pattinair, Alfie Woodard, and D.B. Sweeney and can be found on Disney+. Plus. This week's prehistoric cinematic work of art is Jurassic Park. This PG-13 film from 1993 has a 2 hour and 8 minute runtime and was directed by Steven Spielberg and the movie's theme song was made by John Williams. It stars Sam Neill, Jeff Goldblum, Laura Dern, Samuel L. Jackson, and Sir Richard Attenborough. Jurassic Park. So much can be said about this film. It's full of suspense, action, and dinosaurs. This was and is one of the most technologically sound films, and its use of animatronics blended with miniatures and CGI are seamlessly put together to make you feel like you're in Jurassic Park. What the effects can't do, the score can, breathing life into the other half of the immersion by setting the tones of the movie from wonderment all the way to terror. This film was revolutionary, and still has sequels being made nearly 30 years later, securing this film's place as a cinematic work of art, like a mosquito in amber. Now playing at the Discovery Theater this Friday, starting at 1 p.m. know what that song means. It means we reached the end of today's episode of Ability to Learn. I had fun! And I hope you had fun too! But not only had fun, I hope you learned something as well. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, or to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified about all the fun we're having at Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day Program.
this is Teacher Liz signing out. Farewell, Discovery Learners. I will see you next time.